You guys, welcome to my channel. It's October! <laughs> Like my favorite month of the year. Um, I got my nails done. Aren't they cute? This is like my first time ever doing acrylics, y'all. So I don't know what I feel about them, but I figured, hey, you know what? Why don't we just give it a try? And I have my little boo to you shirt. I actually just made this today. Uh, so isn't it cute? <laughs> I'm really excited, you guys. October is the best month of the year. It's my favorite month of the year for many, many reasons. Fall is my favorite season. All of those fall scents, all of the goodies, all of the pumpkin loveliness. And it's also my birthday month. So, of course, you know, the best month, right? October, y'all. Best month ever. <laughs> How is it October already, you guys? I, I can't even, like... I swear September flew by, like flew by. I just am, wow. Also, I just realized I'm filming on not my regular filming. So, well, you can get a cute a look at my cute background. Let me get out of the way. Ooh, I guess it doesn't do much because of the chair. <laughs> But yeah, I got my I got my background all set up and let me switch over to the other filming way that I film. Much better. I knew something was looking a little bit weird. But I got my shirt. I made it just for this video. And it matches my nails. Sorry you guys, I'm like really excited. <laughs> I am not normally the kind of person that does this kind of stuff. I don't wear makeup much. I'm sure if you've seen other videos of mine. I'm not a big makeup person. I'm not a big dress up person. <laughs> this is the first time in my life. I'm going to be 34 at the end of the month. First time in my life I've ever got my nails done. I've at least got acrylics. So yeah, that should tell you a little bit about me. But I figure, you know what? Why not? Why not? It's all my birthday. It's coming up to um, just some fun times. I love October. October is always so special to me because as a family, we would always go to like pumpkin patches and the apple orchards. My grandpa, who unfortunately passed away last year, we, him and my grandma, we'd always go down and pick apples because she would make applesauce and he would make apple cider and it was so good. <laughs> so I do plan on going and kind of... I can't remember where what I was talking about because my dad interrupted me. But I was just saying October, the best month. I love it. So I decided to be a little festive for the first video of October, which is also my Jurassic TBR video. You guys, I have been loving playing this game. This is like, I look forward to making this video every single month now. I'm on round five. Can you believe that guys? It's been five months since I started this game. Hi. Okay, so I want to update you all though. I made a new board. <laughs> well, I didn't really make a new board. I made it nicer. I fixed up the old one. Okay, so I got a sturdier board and I did a little updating on the board itself, you guys. So one thing that I did was I changed the placement a little bit. So now you can see the whole island, whereas before it kind of cut off here and cut off there. I made the board a little bit smaller. So it's a little easier for me to hold up. It's a little bit easier to show in videos. Also, I added or I changed a couple of the colors up. So the red squares footprints and the green footprints are my cards. These two cards here. And I went ahead and, and changed some of the colors to them. So I just added a couple more reds and a couple more greens. I didn't add any more footprints. I just changed, like I changed the white, I changed the black, I changed the yellow, so on and so forth. So now there's the exact number of green and reds. There's more green and reds than anything else because I really want to get to my prompts. And that's like, you know, what's fun about the game. Uh, yeah, so I redid it and this is my new board, isn't it? amazing. I'm so proud of myself. <laughs> really all I did was uh, finagle the colors, reprint this out, make it a little smaller and get a nicer quality poster board and like this is like foam board instead of poster board. So yes. But as you guys can see <laughs> by the board here, it is my Jurassic 
TBR time. So yeah, I'm really excited. Oh, I almost forgot to tell you all, I got myself some new dice. So this one is super exciting, you guys. This is so exciting. Like I am so excited. I got myself some dice. Can you see them? <laughs> I got a D8 and a D10. And what I'm going to be doing, at least for right now, I don't know, I might change this up, is I'm going to be rolling both of these at the same time, whichever one has the higher number, the dice I'm going to use for the month. So um, the D10 will make my, hopefully, make my game easier as I have more chances of moving farther ahead. The D8 will be a little bit more difficult. I don't know if you guys can see this or not, but there are little baby brontosauruses inside there. Look! Uh, I got it from this Etsy shop, Sage something. I'll link it down below if you guys are interested. Uh, these dice are really cute. I've never had any sort of fancy dice before. I've only ever had like D6s and they all have little baby dinosaurs inside. I love it. So it's perfect for my game. So uh, the way it's gonna go is I just roll one of these. Whatever I get is gonna be the one I roll with. So yeah, it's basically just the same as before. If you guys have not seen my videos, go check it out. My playlist, I'll link it. You guys can check out the first video where I do all of my rules and everything. It's fairly simple. I have a couple things to talk about though before we get into the game. I saw, God, I totally can't remember their name right now. They do a coffee game, like a coffee inspired PBR game. I will put their picture and link their their YouTube down below. But I saw a fellow booktuber where she was doing September's TBR, but she added the extra challenge of letting her dogs pick every single book she read. So she picked a couple books that were like towards the prompt. So say the prompt was like, read a book with green on the cover. She picked a couple green books and had her dogs pick out which one of those green books she was going to read. And I was like, that's so much fun. Like, I love Pet Pick. It's my favorite to watch. I haven't got it's in my stack, but I haven't gotten it yet. And I don't know when I will. So I was like, you know what? Why not just have fun with it? It's my birthday month and it's going to make things way more chaotic. That is for sure. And I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it. I don't know how it's going to work. Hopefully Ranger is nice to me. <laughs> but basically what I'm going to do is pick two to four books per prompt. And he's going to pick which book I'm going to read. So. Yeah, extra extra added chaos to the game. That should hopefully be all of the information y'all need, all the pleasantries out of the way. Yeah, I will link anything that's important down below, but let's just go ahead and play the game. I'm so excited. Okay, so I have my two new dice. As you guys can see, there's little baby dinosaurs in here. So we're going to roll each one of these to see if I'm using the 8-sided or the 10-sided today. Whichever one lands the higher number will decide which one I'm using. Okay, so we got a 7. We got a 1. So that means I will be using 8-sided die today. And as normal, I have Ellie Sattler who will be accompanying us trying to escape Jurassic TBR. Jurassic TBR round five, row one. We have an eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Black Thriller. So I landed on Thriller. And like I said, you guys, I am having Ranger pick my books. So I've picked out four books that I would like to read that are thrillers and he's going to pick from those and let me know which one of these I'm going to be reading. So the first one we have is The String by Caleb Brakey. All I know is this is Christian suspense about a serial killer playing a game of people. Then we have The Girl Behind the Red Rope by Ted Decker and Rochelle Decker. This is about a girl escaping a cult, Christian fiction. And then we have Frantic by Mark de la Soto, another serial killer book, Christian fiction. Again, these are all Christian fiction actually. And the last one is Breach of Honor by Janice Cantro, Christian fiction police stuff. Let's see which one he picks. We have Breach of Honor, we have Frantic, Girl Behind the Red Rope, and The String. Okay, choose. You chose Frantic. Good boy. All right, we got Frantic. And that was Frantic. Well, that is the book, it is Frantic by Mark 
de la Soto. Don't know if I'm saying that correctly or not. But this is the one ranger picked, as you guys saw. I don't even really know what this was about. I was just like, let's just check out all the spooky Christian books that I can find, because <laughs> I want to read them. Can a deranged serial killer be stopped before it's too late? A gas station attendant. She gets an urgent message from a young girl in the backseat of a car. He rescues her and now he's on the run. As they face kidnapping, underground cults, and other evils, can Marnie trust the simple faith of a child and stand his ground against a power so twisted? Sounds like there's going to be some spiritual warfare or at least some sort of like, ah, oh, what's the word? Allegorial? I might not be saying the correct word there, but where it's like metaphor for Jesus, you know? Anyways. Sounds really good, so I'm excited. <laughs> Rule number two. Three. One, two, three. Jurassic TBR card. And we've got Gary Mitchell. Read a book about dinosaurs. We have a little slash mark there in the corner, you guys, which means I have to read two books to fill this one prompt. Okay, well, this is a fun one, um, but not at the same time. So we got a Jurassic TBR card and I drew Gary Mitchell, read a book about dinosaurs. But as you guys can see down in the corner, there's a slash mark, which means I gotta read two books for this prompt. Whew, okay, well, we'll see how this game how we go? I don't know. <laughs> Let's uh, go ahead and um, I'm gonna pick the books for that. So for that, I'm choosing The Science of Jurassic Park and the Lost World or How to Build a Dinosaur by Rob Dussel and David Lindley, or these are the ones Ranger's gonna choose from. Nonfiction about what it says. Then I have For Prince of Thunder by James F. David. This one is basically rift in time happens and prehistoric animals are walking today's streets. Then I have The Great Dinosaur Mystery Solved by Ken Ham, a non-fiction creationist view of dinosaurs. And the last one is Raptor Red, which is like a, as far as I can understand, like a nature documentary about a female raptor. I have Great Dinosaur Mystery Solved, Footprints of Thunder, that is a stand-in for Raptor Red and the Science of Jurassic Park. Okay. Raptor Red. All right. Okay, I mixed up the order and we're going for round number two. Okay, pick. The Great Dinosaur Mystery. Good boy. Okay, Ranger picked. The first time ever picking. He did a good job, I think. And this is for, again, my dinosaur prompt. And I have to read two books because why did I do this to myself? Uh, but the first book, as you guys saw, he picked The Great Dinosaur Mystery Solved by Ken Ham. And this is signed. I got to meet Ken Ham when I was in high school or just out of high school, I think. He is a very well-known creationist. He is a Christian. I want to say Christian scientist, but like isn't Christian science a religion. <laughs> He's a scientist who is a Christian, who is a creationist. I am a creationist. I do believe in creation and the science that backs it up. I don't just believe blindly, y'all. But yeah, he is the founder and executive director of Answers in Genesis. The true history of Earth and its inhabitants. You're thinking about this world will never be the same. A wealth of information combined into one volume. This fascinating book is perfect addition for your family. And I think this is supposed to be a very accessible book, a very family friendly book. So Oh, I'm really excited. Good job, Range. You picked good. And the next one that Ranger picked for me is one I'm really excited to read, and that's Raptor Red. So this month, of course, I was wanting to read mostly spooky books, but you know what? It's okay. We gotta get some dinosaurs in there every now and then. <laughs> so Raptor Red, as far as I know, this is like a, it's almost like a nature documentary in book form about a raptor, and her name is Red. And all I know is that I've heard great things about it. It sounds amazing. It's dinosaurs. Of course, it's going to be good. And it's what he picked for me. So, yay! <laughs> Bowl number two is also a three. One, two, three. That's a, another Jurassic TBR card. And we have Zara Young, Rita Standalone. And then we got another Jurassic TBR card. See, adding these cards or adding more spaces is good. I'm excited. 
And we got Zara Young read a standalone Breach of Honor again by Dennis Catro, The Girl Behind the Red Rope again by Ted Decker and Michelle Decker Rooms by James L. Rupert, Haunted House type of story, Christian fiction, and The Resurrection by Mike Duran. And this is like a woman resurrects a young boy and it's possibly like in time prophecy type of stuff. You guys, I'm editing this video and I realized that somehow I deleted footage of me or of Ranger picking my books. So you will just have to trust me when I tell you that this is the book that Ranger picked. I don't know how I deleted it. I, I swear I counted on my computer to make sure I had the right amount of videos before I deleted them off my phone. Apparently I didn't. But yeah, sorry, you'll miss out on this one. Um, but just trust me, this is the one that Ranger picked. For standalone, Ranger picked The Resurrection by Mark Duran. This woman raises a boy from the dead. She creates a uproar in the quiet coastal town of Sun Tree. Some brand her a witch, others a godsend. The controversy is just beginning for this resurrection she has awakened more than just a dead boy. And so it's kind of like spiritual warfare, this is Christian fiction, like end times maybe, possibly end times kind of stuff, demons, angels, that kind of thing. I'm super excited to read this. I want to read spooky books this month. This is a spooky book and I want to try and read a majority of Christian fiction spooky books because I have something in the works for you all and I'm really excited. That's all I'm going to say, <laughs> but yeah, so this one, I'm excited to get to this book. Thanks, Range. Goal number four. Well, number four is a two. One, two, fantasy. Okie dokie. Moving along slowly, but moving along. But I'm on fantasy and the choices I'm choosing for fantasy, or Ranger's gonna be choosing for me. The Evolution by Max Brooks. Sasquatch Murder Mystery. <laughs> Into the Drowning Deep by Mira Grant. This is the one I really want to read this month. And this is Horror Mermaids. Six of Crows, this is Crooked Kingdom, but it's just taking the place for Six of Crows. Um, I have read it, but I'm gonna reread it. Heist fantasy world. It takes place in the Shadow Grishaburse, Shadow and Bone, that kind of stuff. And the last one is Rosebud Phantom of the Opera retelling. I have De Evolution, Cougar Kingdom is staying in for Six of Crows, In the Drowning Deep, and Rosebud. Okay, fine. Six of Crows it is, buddy. Oh boy. And of course the one I want to read, you picked last. Good job, bud. Okay, he didn't pick the one I wanted. He was doing so good. He was doing so good, you guys. I really wanted Fearly Drowning Deep. But instead, Ranger picked Six of Crows. I don't have Six of Crows. I have Crooked Kingdom. I need to reread Six of Crows so I can read Crooked Kingdom. I was thinking about putting this like directly on, but then I was like, man, I'm gonna have to add another book though because I really need to reread re Six of Crows. It's been a while. So I was like, you know what? <sighs> We're just gonna read Six of Crows. It's just what it's gonna be. This is just a stand in because. It's the sequel. Those of you who don't know what Six of Crows is, where have you been? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Uh, it's a book to Darling, of course. Lady Bardugo, did I say that? That's who wrote, wrote it? Basically, it is a fantasy heist series, novel, whatever, about this crew of like ragtag people, kids, teenagers, young adults, that are sent on like the world's most impossible heist and it is really freaking good and it takes place in the Grishaverse which is where the Shadow and Bone trilogy takes place. This is kind of like a spin-off series. But yeah, you can see. Six of Crows. That's what I'm actually going to be reading. That's what I'm reading for fantasy. So interesting. I'm reading a lot of dark books so it's gonna be kind of nice. So even though the Six of Crows is a little bit on the more somber side or more kind of um, gritty, I guess you would say. It's not as heavy as some of these other ones. So Get some light fantasy going on in there too, will be nice. Girl number five. Is a five. One, two, three, four, five. Owned TBR, and just so you guys can see, it is five. Owned TBR. I'm doing it a little bit differently this month. Normally I have a random number generator pick my own TBR because I'm having Ranger pick them. I'm just putting ones that I really want to read. And you'll probably, you guys will probably see patterns throughout this. There are a few books that I really want to read. And if he doesn't pick them for one, I'm going to try and get him to pick them for something else. So we'll see. But um, for my own TBR, The Lost Village, this one is Blair Witch Project meets Midsommar, translated from Swedish. And then I also have The Girl in the Red Rope again and The Evolution again. 
So hopefully he picks one of these. I don't know. We'll see. They have the evolution, the rope behind the red rope, and the lost village. Okay. Ranger is doing me good, you guys. Okay, I mean, yeah, I picked the books and I want to read all of the books that he picked, but I can tell you there are some books that I want to read more than others. <laughs> and of course, you just saw, he picked The Lost Village by Camilla Steen. This is a translated, it's translated by Alexander Fleming. Uh, this came out in 2019. This has been, was getting some buzz around booktube. For a while, this says the Blair Witch Project meets Midsommar, this brilliantly disturbing thriller from Camilla Stern, an electrifying new voice in suspense. So I have not seen Midsommar. I kind of want to watch it, but at the same time, I kind of don't because it looks, I've heard it's disturbing, <laughs> but I love the Blair Witch Project. I love the Blair Witch Project. And so when I heard there was a book that was, you know, um, like it, I was like, yeah, Yes, please. Plus the fact that it is a Swedish author and uh, the Norwegians are the Norwegians. I say that because I just finished reading a couple of Norwegian books. The Scandinavian people are really, really known for their horror and like their crime thriller, horror, mystery, that kind of stuff. This is about a film, a documentary crew that go to this place called The Lost Village. This woman has been obsessed with it since she was a little girl. In 1959, her grandmother's entire family disappeared in the mysterious tragedy. And ever since the unanswered questions surrounding the only two people who were left, a woman stoned to death in the town center and an abandoned newborn have plagued her. So she gets like this, it's like the documentary aspect of Blair Witch where they go and they're just like, Filming, freelance filming this documentary on this place but pe things and people I think start disappearing like her crew start disappearing or things just go haywire I mean if you've seen Blair Witch you kind of can get a gist so I'm excited <laughs> it's gonna be I I want this to be scary like I haven't read a scary book in a long time like a really scary book all I know is that the Scandinavian people can sure write their crime dramas so I'm excited! <laughs> Roll number six is a four. One, two, three, and four. Thriller. I added all these new squares. I keep saying squares. Footprints. So in the hopes of getting more prompts, cards. And I keep landing on stuff that's not prompt cards. <laughs> I landed on Thriller once again. And this time I'm having him pick from three. And those are The String, The Serial Killer Game One, Christian Fiction, Breach of Honor, Police Procedural, Christian Fiction. They're all behind the red rope. <laughs> I want to read this book. Okay, range. Whiz. <laughs> we have The String, The Girl in the Red Rope, and Breach of Honor. Pick one. Breach of Honor. Breach of Honor is the next one he picked. So Breach of Honor by Janice Cantro. What drew me to this book is it takes place in Oregon. You guys, okay, I was gonna say everyone knows, but like, you probably don't know. I love Pacific Northwest. It's my favorite setting of all time in books in real life. Like I live in Oregon. I, I just, yeah, I'm so excited. <laughs> this is like a police drama thriller police thriller. As a police officer in Table Rock, Oregon, Leia Radcliffe puts her life on the line to help others every day, but at home, Leia is battling her own personal nightmare. Brad, her abusive husband, a fellow officer, celebrated hero, and beloved son of a powerful, prominent family. Brad's violent outbursts and suspicious activities have left Leia physically and emotionally scarred until one desperate action to put a stop to his abu abuse results in deadly consequences men male police officers rich family you know that kind of stuff unfortunately does happen in real life i guess this author is actually a retired long beach police officer so that's cool because i know that the police stuff in here is most likely going to be legit i am glad to hear that she is actually a, a former police officer so this stuff should be Pretty good. This is, it's kind of a chunky book though, you guys. It's kind of chunky. 420 pages. So we're reading some big books this month, but it's okay. It sounds so good. Like I said, I pre-ordered it because I was like, yes, please. Takes place in Oregon. You can't do better than that, in my opinion. Yep, I'm excited. Rule number six. Rule number six is a six. 
One, two, three, four, five, six. Mr. TBR card. And we have Match My Outfit. We landed on our first Mr. TBR card. This is interesting because normally this game loves these things. And now that I added like two or three more green squares, this is the first one I've landed on. I don't know what's up with that. But yeah, Mr. TBR. And we got a Match My Outfit. This is my outfit. <laughs> So this one, um, I have some thoughts, y'all. What I'm going to do for this is because quite honestly, um, the only like book I own that would kind of match this color scheme wise is my dinosaur book, <laughs> um, which I do really want to read, but like, I want to get spooky ones on here. So you know what? I had a thought. I had a thought and my thought was, what, what's this shirt about? Um, the shirt is about boo to you, booing you, uh, <laughs> scaring you. It's about ghosts. It's about bats. It's got a um, little spider and some spider webs. And so you know what? You know what this shirt screams to me? You know what this shirt screams to me? Besides like Halloween and all that kind of stuff. This shirt screams haunted houses because we got the spookies. So matching my outfit is going to be more of the theme matching the theme of my outfit then because you know my nails i got i got the spook spook nails i got the spook spook shirt i got the kind of dark spooky not spooky um, makeup um so we're gonna go with haunted house stories instead that is what i'm choosing for this we're reading or we're picking haunted house stories to match my outfit so let me get the haunted house books to show you what range we're we'll picking from so i got a couple haunted house books there was like a jingle that was weird. Okay, the first one is House of Dark Shadows by Robert Ropelio. Yeah, it's about a, it's like a young adult or middle grade, maybe? Uh, Christian fiction about a boy and his family that move into this house and it's weird and it has like portals and it's haunted. So we're going with that. Next, Craven Manor by Darcy Coates. I think that's how you pronounce her name. Haunted House. Then we have Rooms by James L. Rupert. This is Christian fiction, Haunt House. And House of Shadows by Darcy Coates and another gothic haunted house. So yes, we're going with the haunted house vibes, smash the outfit, let's see what Ranger picks. We got House of Dark Shadows, House of Shadows, Rooms, and Craven Manor. Okay, Ranger. Pick! House of Shadows it is! Good boy. Well, this wasn't necessarily the one I was looking forward to reading the most, but I am really excited about that. That is House of Shadows, and this is by Darcy Coates. Coates? How do you pronounce her last name? Is it Coates? Is it Coates? I think it's Coates. Like, that's how it's spelled, but we all know I don't speak English very well. Um, I don't really know much about this. All I know is like a haunted house. And like I said, <laughs> I know uh, it doesn't really necessarily like the coloring doesn't match the outfit. And maybe the vibes though, like spooky, right? But because I got ghosties, we got to do haunted house. It just is. You guys just roll with me, please. <laughs> I believe this one is, yes, this woman marries this random guy. She's like down on her luck bankruptcy this guy this wealthy stranger asks for her hand in marriage so it's sounding very gothic i like that it will save her family but it condemns sofu to a life in northwood a vast and unnaturally dark mansion situated hours from civilization so like giving me gothic giving me haunted house i'm excited to try it out and see what i think about this author okay now because we only have a few more spaces to go till we reach the end i have to roll a one two three or i have to go back the number of spaces that my dice rolls so let's see what it's going to get for me this month and we got a four so i have to go back four spaces one two three four a mr tbr card Boop. what do we got life uh, finds a way and this is a tbr vet and <laughs> Because this is like a specialty card, um, this specific card means that I have to read two prompts, two books to fill this prompt. 
Okay, doke. And you know, because my game can't be nice. Like, it just, it decides it just... It's my birthday month game. Why? <laughs> so I had to go back four spaces because I did not roll the required amount to win. And I landed on a TBR card, though, which makes me very happy um, because this is only the second one of the game, which is weird because I swear this game normally adores these cards. So we got a Mr. TBR. Focus. And we got Life uh, Finds a Way. TBR Vet. But guys. Guys. <laughs> this is one of the special cards. This is one of the special cards in my, or my Mr. TBR pile. When I draw this, I gotta read two books per this prompt. Ooh. That's like two extra books on this TBR that do not need to be there. But they are because that's just what this game, it does. Uh, so TBR vets, two TBR vets. Um, one, Hostage to the Devil, the dog ate it, yeah. This is by Malachi Martin. This is true. Nonfiction. There we go. Nonfiction about people having being possessed and getting exorcisms. And the next one, the Bigfoot book, The Evolution, by Max Brooks. Okay, find it. Which one? The Evolution. And the last ones because I wanted to get both of these books on this TBR, so I kind of I cheated. <laughs> I didn't really cheat because he did he did pick. But I'm cheating. So yeah, you guys just saw him pick The Evolution by Max Brooks, TBR Vet. I got this when it came out, signed copy. I got this in, oh my goodness gracious, when did this come out? 2020? 2019? 2020. And I started to read it. You can maybe see there's like a little bit of a bookmark in here. It's a really old Joanne's thing. Um, so I started to read it and I just put it down and never picked it back up again. But I really need to read this because the state was in Oregon too, you guys. Actually, really not that far from me. Mount Rainier is really not that far from where I live. So ha. <laughs> this is a Bigfoot novel and it is Bigfoot novel by Mac Max Brooks, he wrote World War Z. The first hand account of the, the Rainier Sasquatch Massacre. So this is a fiction written as a non- Fiction. Yes, my favorite type, my favorite type of book. Fiction written as non-fiction. I'm excited. And I love Bigfoot. I don't know if you guys know this, but I like love Bigfoot. <laughs> so, oh man. Good job, Range. Um, yeah, so what I'm deciding to do, you guys, is make sure I read this one first, even though because that way I'm like, he did technically pick this one. But I was like, man, I don't want to have to like go and try and find two more books that he has to pick from for the next like, you know, round. So I'm just cheating and going to read both of the ones. <laughs> but this is the one I'm going to read first because it is the one he picked. Which then of course means Hostage to the Devil is two. Um, yeah, so the dog, he decided that this was his chew toy. Um, he did that a little bit ago. I need to find that little piece. I just had it. It was there a minute ago. I came back in and then when I return it to the library, obviously I will let them know. You guys, this book has been on my TBR over 10 years. Yep. It's been a long time. <laughs> a couple reasons why I haven't read it. It's dense. Like, dense. It's a lot of words. It's small print. It's a lot of words. It's also nonfiction, it's, it's dense, pretty heavy topic. And I just keep wanting to read it in October, like spooky season and October comes around and I never get around to it. So I'm like, come on, I have read like the preference or like the beginning part of it. And it was a bit of a, it took me back to get through it, uh, but that was also a long time ago. So we'll see, hopefully I can like work my way through this. But for those of you who are unaware of what this is, this, oh, it's also by Malcolm Martin. Don't think I said that. This is The Possession and Exorcism of Five Contemporary Americans. This is a nonfiction, you guys. And the guy, the author is, I don't know if he's a Catholic priest. No, he's a theologian, premier authority on the Roman Catholic Church, 
and former professor at the Vatican's Pontifical Bible Institute. So he knows what he's talking about. I am not Catholic. I am Christian, but I do believe in demons. I do believe in demonic possession. I don't necessarily agree with the way the Catholic Church kind of handles things, but that's neither here nor there. Though this was written in the 70s, so it's not so contemporary anymore. But it's not like this is like in medieval times or like Salem Witch Trials or whatever. Like this is like we had television and cars and, you know, like telephones and stuff, you know, back when this this was taking place. And this is basically just the I'm trying to find the um yeah. So it was written in 1976. The preference preference from this copy is 19. 92. So 1976. So I mean like 60s, 70s, you know, my mom and my, both my parents were alive. It's not like it was that long ago. But yeah, he just kind of goes over these cases. I think he talks to, I don't know if he was like necessarily witnessed them firsthand, but he speaks to the priests and kind of just goes over like that did the exorcism, like the exorcist, the actual exorcist priests, you know, not the movie. <laughs> and it just tells their story. I mean, which I think out of all the spooky books I'm going to be reading, this is the most terrifying because this is real. And I know not everyone believes in this kind of stuff, but I do. I do. And so demonic possession, anything that has to do with that kind of stuff, spiritual warfare kind of stuff is terrifying. And yeah, nonfiction. So I got two nonfictions. Do I? No, three. Three non-fictions this month. So that's gonna be really fun. I haven't read a non-fiction in a while. It's gonna be a slog to get through just because of how dense it is. And it's gonna be heavy. So my goal for this one, you guys, I just want to read the first case. If I can get through the first case, so there's five cases. If I can read case one by the end of the month, I will be like, finally! <laughs> because I've been trying to read this book for so many years. I just never got around to it. Never, never, never. I will be kind of probably reading this throughout the month. I don't think I'm going to sit down and read this in one go, but I will read The Evolution before I put this one up. So motivation to read that because I want to read this. Okay, and as we all know now, since I've gone backwards, I just get, get to keep going forward until I win the game. What is this? Rule number nine? Rule number nine is a five. One, two, three, four, five. And we land on Jurassic TPR card again, which is <laughs> T-Rex. Read a book with 500 pages plus. Thanks, game. <laughs> like, I was excited. I was so, so excited. So excited to get more of these cards this month. I was so excited. <sighs> we got T-Rex. We got T-Rex. Read a book with 500 plus pages. I really screwed myself when I did this. You know how hard it is to find a book with 500 or more pages? A lot of chunkers I have on my shelf are like four something. I'm like, no. <laughs> um, but I was able to find two. So let's talk about that. The first one, Restless Souls, the Sharon Tate family's account of stardom, the Manson murders, and crusade for justice by Alyssa Statman with Brie Tate, nonfiction about what it says it's about. And State of Fear by Michael Crichton. Oh, I forgot to show you, tell you, these are over 100, 500 pages. This book is 500, I don't know if you can focus on that, 567 pages. So well over 500. And this book, 586, 586, this has more. Okay, well, so those are the two that Ranger's gonna pick from. So the only two more, only another 500 more that I could find right now. So, <sighs> thanks, game. For the book over 500 pages, we have Restless Souls and State of Fear. Okay, Ranger, go find. Good boy! I'm so thankful to this dog that he picked the right book because I was sweating it. <laughs> of course I want to read both of these. But he picked Restless Souls, the Shannon, Sharon Tate, excuse me, the Sharon Tate family's account of stardom, the Manson murders and crusade for justice by Alyssa Statman with Brie Tate. I picked this up a few years ago. I saw this at like a discount bookstore 
and I was like, I have to have this. Some of you may know I am obsessed with true crime and I really like learning about cults. And this one specifically is about the Manson family, though this is not about the family. This is about one of his victims. And Shannon Tate was a beautiful actress who I believe she was pregnant um, when she was murdered, which is, it's just the whole situation is incredibly tragic. But this is her story. And I really like the fact that this is about her. It's not necessarily about Manson and the family. This is her story. We got pictures and the like in here. Um, just a really, really tragic story. I'm really excited to learn more about the victim because their stories are the ones that need to be told. Okay, and what will hopefully be our last roll? Of the game, if I roll a two or higher, this is the last roll. Yeah, here we go, roll 11. You get a four, so that means, boop, boop, yay, <laughs> finish the game. Oh man, this is gonna be an interesting PBR this month. Oh, okay, <laughs> well there you have it guys. There you go, this is my entire October TBR. <sighs> Can I do it? Mmm. <laughs> October's gonna be busy. Like I said at the beginning, I'm going to be doing Pumpkin Patch. We're going to, probably gonna go to a couple haunted houses. Josh is hopefully gonna be staying one of the weekends, depends on how his work schedule goes. He'll be in town and I'm, I'm trying to get him to do a video with me. We will see. He's very like, does not like to be on camera. So we'll see, I will convince him. <laughs> and um, what else was I gonna say? Oh yeah, it's my birthday. A lot of stuff going on, a lot of stuff going on in October. So can I read all these? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I think I have a majority of these in audiobook though. That was gonna make my life way easier. Way easier. <sighs> but I'm not gonna be too hard on myself this month because you know what? It's my birthday month and we're just, poof. it's gonna be good. It's gonna be good. So yeah, you guys, I really hope you like this video. I hope you like the new setup for my game. Like my lovely nails. <laughs> Yeah, like, subscribe, comment, do all the things that y'all do. Thank you so much for watching. I have really high hopes for the rest of this month. I uh, have a lot planned, but you know, like I said, we're gonna see what happens. So that's it, that's the video. Uh, thank you for watching and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye guys. Such a steepy boy after a long hard day of picking books. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Just a good boy.